simulator. Uh, one of those reasons would be to assist with uh, controlling uh, appetite. Uh, so one of the, th the, th the thing to understand that's most important is that the left vagus is, it senses the stretch in your abdomen, in your, in your uh, viscera, your gastrointestinal tract. So if you're not getting that sensation of stretch, you don't know that you're full. So it, it, it's a way that, well, it's not going to make you lose weight per se, it's going to help you with understanding when you're full and not overeating or, or stopping soon enough. And, that, and that's really a problem. Uh, nobody, as far as I know, is addressing the stretch reflex and uh, stretch information of the intestinal tract, and they should be. And so uh, as a vagal stimulator, we're just gonna use a, a simple TENS unit. There's a TENS 7000, it's called. And so we have our patient here, and she has come in. She's our, our lab, man, uh, lab, lab partner on this. So the uh, 10 7000 comes with instructions. It comes with two pads, okay, already in it, that will go on your skin. Uh, it has some other, uh, other things written in there. So setting up the TENS, uh, you, you pull out the TENS unit. You want to turn it over. It's got a little compartment here. Pull your black thing like that. We're going to take... Now the battery, they, they supply a battery. The, the problem is the battery is contained. Let me get a pair of scissors here. to said battery. I do want to show you guys just the setup from beginning to end. Try not to cut yourself. All right, so you have to take that little plastic thing off. Then, of course, I can't see entirely, but I believe, yes, I believe it goes like that. A little difficult to get this in there. You have to, when you go to put the battery in, you have to put it in somewhat flat. You, normally you put batteries in at an angle. This one has to kind of slide in flat like that. Let's just make sure that I got that in there properly. I may have put it in backwards. Nope, I must have gotten it in there properly because it, it turns on. Okay, now, to access the compartment. Okay, so let's close the back compartment up. We have the battery in properly. Uh, if you're gonna store this for any length, long period of time, please take the battery out. Uh, the battery will go bad, it'll ruin your unit, and these are about $40, okay. So we wanna change, if you open up this little compartment right here, you can see that there's access to the controls. Now this is the two, the, the two channel, uh, and it's a non-rechargeable, obviously we had to put a battery in it. Uh, the four channel, there is a four channel version, that's not a bad idea, it comes with the TENS unit and a muscle stimulator, um, so it would have four, and it looks different inside. Uh, I don't have that one, so I'm not gonna be able to show you that today. So in order to set, make the settings on the machine, you actually have to turn the little dial on just a, just a bit so that we can, so that we can change. So we're gonna hit set, I don't know if you can see this. And when you come uh -huh. set, the width comes up, right? So okay. it says uh -huh. width. And yeah. uh, so the people that are in the know say that set the width to 250, okay? okay? Then we're gonna press set again, and the hertz are gonna come up. Now the hertz is supposed to be, for a vagal stimulator, supposed to be 25 hertz. Um, oh. Oh, 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 okay. Now, I just ran into a problem. I can't get it to go to 25. It jumps from 20 to 30, and that's because up here, the mode that it is in is called burst. So setting mode, you can see that indicated burst is there, okay? Then I have normal, and I want to put it on normal, uh, you, or actually I want to put it on modulation. The reason we want to put it on modulation is because the problem with a TENS unit or any stimulation is that your nerves, so there used to be this idea that the gate theory of pain, that's a whole, that there was this gate theory of pain that your neurons can only uh, worry about one thing at a time. That was proven false uh, just by a simple understanding of uh, there's no gate theory, there's no gate theory, or the, the gate theory of pain, of pain is completely wrong because your neurons do this thing called neural accommodation. For example, your, your clothes are on your body and you completely forget they're there until I mention it, right? So your nerves have accommodated to the sensation of your clothes. So if, if the gate theory of pain worked, you could, would just need to wear clothes and would never have pain. Um, that doesn't happen. So <laughs> therefore, neural accommodation, your nerves only pay attention to novel or, or dangerous 
things. So if you're using a, a TENS unit for pain relief or et cetera, et cetera, it, it doesn't work uh, very well. So uh, you can use the normal setting or the burst setting, but then the modulation, and modulation just means random modulation, so that it will jump around and that your nerves can't get used to it. Okay. So once we're on there, back to, uh, again, set. I'm on 250. Mm -hmm. I want to change my, my uh, this says rate. This says rate, and I want to, Oh yeah. Okay. Well, uh, 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 okay. There's my 250. Why is it doing that? Oh, okay. It's setting up both channels. Okay. So you, yeah. Let me go to. Oh, okay. That's all right. Never mind. Just hit set twice. Go to your your hertz, which is over here. Take that down to 25. There's okay. 25 now. So now we have that on 25. Okay. It will just stay here. So once it's set, okay, so then I'm going to hit my mode, 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 modulation, set, set. Everybody's set. We're all set. It'll say 250. It'll say 150. It'll say 25. So we're just going to, we're just going to close, close that and say, okay, we're set. Okay. So I'm going to leave it on modulation. We're going to turn it back off for a moment. <clears throat> okay. So that's how the, the unit is now set up. That's how we want it for a vagal stimulator. Now it comes with two, because this is a two channel, it comes with two sets of leads. And typically what happens is these leads will attach to your electrodes, okay? Come on, there we go. Be a little hard to get open. Yeah, so if we just undo those leads. Now, since we want a vagal stimulator, there's a couple of different things we want to do. Um, Okay, so, so these are these are hers, right? So right in the top here, you just plug them in right there, okay. and they just fit right. Come on, we'll go in there. Why is it not going in there? What is going on? There we go. Just press it. In. Yeah, well, yeah, press and get it just lined up just right. Okay, so we have two of these. Now, so you want one channel. If you buy, so that was a 10, 7,000, and then there is a uh, bio-rhythm, a bio-rhythm ear clip for vagal stimulation, okay? And those little things look like, like this. It's a double-sided ear clip, okay? Now, there's two places that you generally put that. You could put it on the tragus of the ear, or you could put it on the oracle of the ear. Uh, we advise that it be more the tragus of the ear because of the vagus nerve innervates the inside of the ear. Okay, um, now here's where things are going to get funny because uh, I get a little I get a little technical. Okay, so you you okay. just slide your leads okay. into there. So you've got one whole channel dedicated to that, okay, and one whole channel dedicated to these. See so, you now you have a you have a set of it comes with a set of four, okay? okay, and again your 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 little leads will fit right in there. So we're going to take two of these and we're going to use them and we're going to apply them to Bahar here. Okay. Patient X. Okay. Now, <clears throat> uh, we are interested in uh, improving her sensation of the stretch of her gastrointestinal tract. So when we're talking about the vagus nerve, there are actually two vagus nerves. There's a dorsal, which means back, and a ventral, which means front. Okay? The ventral is interested in cardioventilatory effort. Okay. Now, since the stretch reflex is, it, of the vagus nerve is on the left, if it's stretch of the heart or stretch of the lungs, it'll, it would be the ear. But if it's, stress of the gas, if it's stretch of the gastrointestinal system, you're actually gonna use, we're not gonna use, so for, for Bahar, she doesn't actually need my little ear stimulator because we're not doing cardioventilatory so for mood, for cardioventilatory, that's gonna deal with the ear. So you'll see this all the time that people are doing vagal stimulation and they're, and they're focusing on the ear. The problem here is if you're, if you're looking at gastrointestinal stuff, the nodose ganglia, anterior to C2, right about here at the angle of the jaw, is the one we're gonna be interested in. So Bahar is actually gonna have four leads. Okay, so we are gonna to match together the function of the vagus nerve, okay? So your, your vagus nerve, right here is gonna be the one that we want to stimulate. 
Okay. So what we're going to do is um, we're going we're to hit a couple of places with your leads here, okay? And then we're going to do one on your stomach. Okay. okay? So we're going to put one lead here, one lead like, uh, and, and generally what we want to do is, is early in digestion, we want, we want to get that sensation of stretch from the stomach, okay? okay? So we're going to do one of those. So just up under your rib cage, just below the, uh, kind of kind of towards the center, we're just going to have you put this one on. Okay, now there's a little plastic separator here that holds these leads together, and you have to pull your leads apart so you can, you know, so we're just going to take that, and we're going to put her, there's the xiphoid, and we're just going to put it right here so that she's getting stimulation into the stomach. Now there's an, and, and we'll talk about the rest of this. So I'm going to put one there and one <coughs> on anterior C2, or not quite anterior, we're going to put it on that sternocleidomastoid. So if you'll turn your head to the right, you see that the sternocleidomastoid pops out, angle of the jaw. So I'm going to put it right, right there. Now that simulation is going to be on the sternocleidomastoid. I'm not on the anterior structures per se, I'm on the muscle. That's fine because that those sensory neurons and the no-dose ganglia are going to pick that information up. Okay, so, so that was going to be our first lead. Our second lead, okay, we want to, we want to supply the sympathetics, right? So the, the, the stomach is innervated at T5 on the left. So we would put one of these leads at T5 in the back. So Bahar, I'll have you turn around for me. And so T5 is... Uh, fairly readily accessible here. So this uh, spinal scapula is T4. So I'm just going to go, I'm going to attach it next to her spine at, so there's a spinal scapula. So I'm going to be, my, my pad is right there. You can see, let's try to turn just a little mm -hmm. bit more. So T5, right? It's a little hard to see with the shirt on, but there's the spinal scapula, okay? You can pull that up, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, let's, let's show. Don't mind. So I can see. Yeah, okay. So spinal scapula, and I'm just at, at, at a level below that, okay? Okay, we'll go ahead and take that on down. Okay, then again, just like we did with the first one, we're going to make sure we separate this for now. Okay, turn back around for me. And then we're basically going to, oh, did we lose one? Oh, we lost one, okay. So again, back to the sternocleidomastoid, make sure that's not on the artery there. You, you wanna be close to the artery, but not on the artery. And then this, and, and again, this front one, now, the, the, yeah, the front one, yeah, we are gonna do, we're gonna do right next to that. We're gonna go, because we wanna get the, the stomach, okay? And that stomach's up under this rib cage, so we're pretty good there. I'm gonna move our vagus one. I'm gonna move our, there we go, sympathetic one. Actually, I'm gonna switch those. I want the sympathetic one closer to the middle, um, right under the rib cage. And, and the reason I want the sympathetic one closer to the middle is there is a ganglia here called the celiac ganglion. So all sorts of people know celiac ganglion. It's also, also called the, the uh, semilunar ganglion because while there's a central bunch of neurons, there's actually these two little half moons on either side. And since we're dealing with stomach and it's on the left side, I want the left semilunar ganglion, right? Then I want that with my sympathetic, my T5 in the back, right? Because I, T, the sympathetics go through that ganglion. Vagus does as well, but we're gonna put vagus over here. Okay. So that all having been said, we're now going to give this to the patient. Now you have to flip up the little top to get into the access, and we want to just turn it on. We're just going to turn both channels on. Okay, now we're going to start with the vagal, the vagal one. So you're going to feel this at your neck, and I want you to turn this up. See how it comes up a little bit, right? like that. So I want it up to your tolerance. I, we, want, we just want a, a good amount of sensation. So since we're doing this, we're not doing this for mood. We're not doing it for uh, cardioventilatory effect, a stretch reflex or, or stretch stimulation. Did it turn off? You don't feel anything? Oh, I think we, yeah. we turned it off. Okay. This way, it's, so that was, uh, okay. feel that, do you feel a little buzzing coming out of it? Not yet. Okay, not keep yet. turning it counter, uh, clockwise. Uh -huh. I do, okay, now I do. Okay, there you okay. go. Uh -huh. Yeah, and just it just has to be strong enough do I only play with this part? No, no, let's do the other one now. Go ahead and okay. turn the other one up because then you'll feel that a little bit in the back and a little bit more in the middle. And Got just it. enough stimulation. 
we want to help bring up that that stimulation because yeah. there are very you know, all sorts of things in the body inhibit the left vagus that's why this makes it such a problem that the left vagus is the one that uh, senses stretch whether that's the dorsal vagal complex or the ventral vagal complex the stretch reflex is on the left so if it's gastrointestinal no dose if it's uh, anything to do with the brain uh, uh, nasal oral pharynx heart lungs then it's the ventral vagal and we would attach to the ear okay. well Bahar is interested in making sure she gets the signal that she's full mm -hmm. so we're going to use this one so what do you think just yeah, a little little, little buzz little that's yeah. it yeah yeah about it all yeah Beautiful. and we just want to do this a couple of times a day uh -huh. um, one of the things we might do is that ask Bahar to do this when she eats right to, and then be cognizant of do I feel like I'm full Okay. Do you get that sensation of full? The, 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 the difficult, or the, 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 the fun thing about mammals is that we, we teach ourselves to do things. We teach ourselves to eat more than we should. We, you know, that, that we, we ignore that stretch reflex, just like a little, a, a little kid who doesn't know that they have to go to the bathroom. They don't know what the sensation is. That means, hey, you're gonna have to go to the bathroom, start planning. All of a, sudden, a kid all of a sudden is like, yeah, I gotta go to the bathroom now was too late there were there were signals that came in earlier and that's what as as we become older we learn what those signals mean we say hey i better start planning on going to the bathroom same thing here i had better start planning on stopping eating i won't take a set second helping or only take a small second helping or whatever uh, or i i see how much food i have and i'm already starting to feel a little full i'm going to plan that i'm going to stop eating here and so that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring those sensations back online and, and integrate them with like, hey, I get a stretch reflex. I feel like I'm getting full. I, I'm going to, I'm going to stop eating. Okay? What happens if you misplace this pad elsewhere? Uh, as long as it's fairly close to the spot, the vagus nerve is not dumb. I mean, it's, 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 it's one, you, there are only two learning nerves in your body: the vagus nerve and the, the pelvic parasympathetics. Uh, so, there, and and the, the interesting thing of this is that, that the information coming in uh, ultimately feeds into the brainstem, and the brainstem uh, shares all that sensory information. It's less direct if we go somewhere else. It's a little more direct if we're here, um, but it could be generally in the area, and that nerve is going to pick it up because it is uh, innervating your throat. It's innervating your jaw. It's, you know all that, and all that information comes into the brainstem. So you'll you'd be fine. You can't. Okay. Yeah, it's not really like you can do it wrong. So there's no harm to it if you just. Well, if you do it too hard, you'll you'll stick out your tongue. Okay. No, and we don't want to teach you okay. to stick out your yeah, tongue. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We, you don't have the muscle stimulator one, so that's not a problem. Yeah, yeah. As long as it's generally close, good enough. Okay. It, it doesn't have to be spot on. It, it, Perfect. It, the general area. Those nerves okay. are highly intelligent, and they share information. Like that's the whole idea of that's referred so pain. That when in, when stimulation comes in, as it gets back into your brain stem or, or spinal cord, nerves with higher uh, importance and higher sensation will pick that information up. So. The information will be shared. Absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, and then just like five, ten minutes. Yeah. And we might even have you do it when you're eating to, to kind of see if we can't get that stretch reflex to okay. kick up. That's what I would highly suggest. When you say when you're eating, while I'm eating, yeah. you wear this? Yeah, so okay. let's say that you're gonna you're gonna you're eating this a meal. Is my lunch, okay. Yeah, your, or your lunch or whatever. Okay. You're saying, okay, I wanna see if I can make it so that I feel that stretch reflex and I become highly aware of it okay. sooner. Okay. Right? Because that's the whole thing is that we've lost that sometimes we denude or you know because your mom said finish your plate right, right so you right. ignored oh yeah but i'm full i don't care finish your plate so we've yeah. taught ourselves to ignore those signals right. we have to relearn that those signals mean something to us right and that's kind of the whole reason we're using a vagal stimulator and why we're doing that because this of the is science of, isn't okay. that interesting yeah it really so, is perfect all right Thank and, you. and then like if you don't want to make sure you don't accidentally bump those just put right. your top on there and there you go Beautiful. okay good to know awesome. thank you all this right thank you so we'll see how that goes so okay so having the vagal stimulators for the ears, that's more cardioventilatory. If you have cardiovascular disease or this, that, the other, uh, obviously I'm not making any claims on it. Oh, there's all sorts of PhDs and MDs that are telling you, hey, vag vagal stimulators is what it does for you. But when we're interested in the gastrointestinal tract, the contacts are here. The right side is for the rate and rhythm. Like if, so for example, say you had slowed emptying of your stomach, mm -hmm. we would stimulate the right nodose uh, uh, ganglia, right? Because that, the, the right side is rhythm and rate. The left side is stretch and volume. Okay, so it's an easy way to remember that. Okay, so hopefully at home you guys can find uh, a use for this as well.